Hello everyone. My name is Muhammad Muhammad, and Halima Asma is my wife. She originally came from Somalia. She was born and grew up in Mogadishu, which is the capital city of the country. When she was seven years old, she started to go to school, and she was in school until eighth grade. She was planning to go to high school, then to a university. Unfortunately, she did not attend the university or even the high school because a civil war broke out in the country. This civil war caused a lot of death, injuries, displacement of many people including all different ages. Due to that civil war, she and her family, they fled to Kenya and they felt major relief when they arrived in Kenya. They were living in Kenya refugee camps for one year and eight months. During that time, her father called her elder sister, who was living in the United States, and he told her their hardships and circumstances. Then she started a sponsorship for them through UNHCR. When they received immigrant visas, they traveled to the USA, and the airplane took them from Nairobi, Kenya. It landed in Houston, Texas. Houston was the first city that Halima lived in the USA. As she told me, Houston was very beautiful and it, and it reminded her of Mogadishu. The first time she tried to go to work, she met a very difficult situation because she did not know English. She wanted to work riding a bus and she wrote her address on a piece of paper to show the bus driver to ask if he is going to that address or not. The only thing she knew she knew was sign language, like a deaf person. So when she, the bus driver shakes his head that means yes, she got on the bus. She didn't know the schedule of the buses and that day was Saturday. After she has done the work, she left the company to go home and that time was late. All buses stopped, since they stop early on Saturdays and Sundays. Later, when she was standing up for a very long time, she became tired and she decided to go walking. Their home was very far, so she rode two buses to go to work. When she was walking, many people saw her. They tried to help me and give her a ride. When they stopped near her, and then they started to ask her what happened. She replied, no English, no English. And then she kept moving and crying at the same time. That is why a lot of people were stopping their cars to give a hand to her. The reason she was refusing help from them was that she believed they will kidnap and rape her. Then they will kill her because she heard that in the orientation which the, the UNHCR gave them when they were coming to the United States. Later, she entered to a gas station. She asked the gas station worker to give a telephone for her. When she gave her his cell phone, she called her mother and her brother to tell them where she is. The man was surprised and he tried to help her but they could not understand each other. Her brother came to the United States for school and he knew English. Then he talked with the worker and he asked the address of the gas station. Then at last they found her. I learned from this story that the most difficult problem that faces most people that the first time when they go to a foreign country is the language barrier. So I am suggesting to the people who are planning to go another country, which is not their motherland, to learn at least the basics of the prospective language, as it will help them to understand with the native people and survive smoothly at the new country.